Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is one that I'm very excited about because it is quite possibly the most requested, if not the second most requested video on my channel of all time, and that is about the topic of high school fishing. So you've seen it on my channel in the past, you know that I've talked about it both in high school and now that I'm in college, and many of you guys want to get involved at home, but you don't exactly know where to start. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that I want Tyler's Real Fishing, this YouTube channel right here, to be your one-stop shop for all high school, college, and professional fishing information. That way, when you guys are moving through your steps uh, in your fishing career, you guys can come back to these videos uh, and learn the information once again that I'm teaching you guys. So if you yourself are in either youth, high school, or college fishing, or have parents and friends that have people in the same scenario, make sure you guys are sharing my channel with them so they can be educated as well. And before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the post notifications. That way you guys never miss a single video that I put out. I try to put out videos that pertain to bass fishing, uh, both tips and tricks and you know, entertainment as well. And so that's what my channel is all about, is having fun teaching you guys how to fish. So when talking about high school fishing, what all is involved? What even is high school fishing? Uh, for this video, I guarantee you it's probably going to be 20 plus minutes long. I'm going to have my laptop in front of me, that way I do not miss a single thing that I wrote down. I have five and a half pages here of information for you guys. I apologize if I talk fast, I'll try to talk as slow as possible, slow myself down, but I say we start with a very brief history on tournament fishing in America in general. And so if I say something that's not quite historically accurate, please forgive me and correct me in the comment section below. I did get this off Wikipedia. So the first ever Bass Angler Sportsman Society tournament was held in June 1967 on Beaver Lake, Arkansas. A total of 106 anglers from 13 different states competed. And in that All-American tournament, the tournament director, Ray Scott, charged $100 as an entry fee with the chance to win $2,000 in a trip to Mexico. And so the winner of that first tournament was Stan Sloan, a name that I've never heard since. My guess he didn't fish professionally for very long, uh, but I could be wrong. Direct me in the comment section below. And so Ray Scott started the first Bassmaster Classic in 1971 at Lake Mead in Nevada. And if you guys have followed Bassmaster for a while, you guys know that the first, I think, five or six classics yet, until 1976, were a mystery lake. So the people fishing it would have no clue until they got on the plane what lake they were going to be fishing. They couldn't rig out their boats. They couldn't have all sorts of crazy tackle for the lake. And so they were forced to bring this one tackle bag, and they were all given the exact same boat on the lake, which is, I think is a very, very cool system. And that's kind of what Major League Fishing is trying to accomplish nowadays. And so since then, as you guys know, Bassmasters exploded. Since then, we've seen the rise of Forest L. Wood and the Forest Wood Cup, and basically the FLW Tour, the PAA, which has since kind of gone by the wayside, and the TBF. And of course, there's tons and tons of regional adult tournaments around the country for people to uh, you know, experience and um, engage in. But for years, ba bass fishing tournaments was really only for the adults and those kids that were lucky enough to have a dad or a grandfather to kind of bring them in. Until 2005 when college fishing began. Uh, so for the sake of time, I'm going to actually save talking about college fishing until the next video that I make about college fishing. So we're going to skip to 2009 when high school fishing was uh, incepted. So the state of Illinois was the first to make competitive bass fishing a state-sanctioned high school sport in 2009. They offered 22 tournaments uh, for 250 high school teams, which at the time was really, really big. And then since then, uh, Illinois, uh, no, Kentucky, and several other states have made it literal like state sports. So just like football or tennis or volleyball, fishing is a state sport for these states. Uh, and the Bass Federation, which is part of FLW, uh, offers high school tournament series in over 40 states, I believe it's more by now, eventually crowning a state champion and giving them the opportunity to compete at a national level. Since then, BASS has gone from just the Bassmaster Classic and the Elite Series to have a, a whole high school trail across the nation as well. Now these tournaments are a bit farther away, we'll discuss these later on in the video, but they kind of mirror how the college fishing series works. And if I'm not mistaken, at least one video mentioned this that I watched, high school fishing is the fastest growing sport in the nation, which is so cool. So we're caught up. So now that we know the history, what exactly does high school fishing mean? So for many schools, the definition varies, but I think across the board, there are several things that stay constant. So first, what I mean by high school fishing is what I was involved in a few years back at Lake Travis High School, and that is bass fishing tournaments. Now, if tournament bass fishing doesn't really appeal to you as a viewer watching this video, that's completely fine, it's not for everybody. And I'm not saying that high schools don't have fishing clubs for people that like to get together and just go out and have fun catching fish, uh, as there's many of those around the country. But what I'm specifically addressing is tournament bass fishing in high schools around the area in both regions and nationwide tournaments. So there are many questions that I get asked on a almost daily basis on Instagram, YouTube, you know, Snapchat, all that jazz uh, about this topic of high school fishing. So I'm going to do my best to address as many as I can. If I miss your question or you have after this extensive video, another question, drop it in the comment section below. But the first question that I want to discuss is how do I know if my high school has a fishing team? 
Well, the first thing that you should do is go and ask your school athletic director or staff that's in charge of student organizations. And if they don't know the answer to that question, then you're going to use this magical thing called Google or Facebook. So fancy. But Tyler, I did all that. And I guess my high school just doesn't have a bass fishing team. Does that mean that I can't fish tournaments in high school? Of course not. Just like I did in my sophomore year of high school, you can create your own team. It's a relatively simple process, but can become difficult uh, depending on your school's athletic or student organization regulations. And so links below will be all the instructions that you guys need on how to create a bass fishing team at your high school, whether it's on Bassmaster, TBF, or just a local tournament trail. And so I'm not gonna spend time going into the steps on how you make a team because every high school is different. And you all are all smart people, you guys can figure out the steps yourself. <laughs> So one large part of high school fishing now is regional fishing teams. So what these are is a lot of small schools are starting to join together as kind of like a regional conference to create a fishing team um, that anybody in the area can join. So you don't have to go to a specific high school to fish on this high school generic team, if that makes sense. Um, it's working out really well across the country. I know of tons that are successful because they're bypassing uh, all of the, which all of the, the few school regulations uh, by not being associated with any individual school. And so these teams are usually run by a local adult fishing trail organization. So it does take more effort to create one, but oftentimes it's actually on that tournament trail to create a high school version of their trail. So if your school is very, very small, or you know that you don't have the time to help create a team right now, possibly look in your area to see if you guys have a regional bass fishing team for youth and high school students. Some of the major concerns that I get around creating a team are, well, Tyler, you know, I want to make a school, a team at my high school, but my school won't let me. Honestly, I have no clue what that means, that your school won't let you have a bass fishing team. The only thing that I can think of is that the school is, is kind of apprehensive about tournament bass fishing. They're not sure about putting high school kids on boats that can go 65 miles an hour on a lake. There seems to be liability there. But the thing is, every tournament trail has insurance to cover the liability. And so really, if you're complacent about making a team, it's not going to happen. If you are a go-getter and you want to make a high school fishing team happen, you're going to make it happen. It's, it's as easy as that. The second one is I can't get people to join the team that I made. Well, it's pretty easy. You go out and you make some friends, all right? <laughs> and the third one is we don't have any boat owners on our team, and none of us can pay for all this travel to the tournaments. And I'm actually going to discuss both of those points later on in this video. So everything that I've discussed so far is pretty consistent between high schools and high school fishing tours, but some teams do run things quite a bit different. Uh, and so to make things easy for myself, I'm going to explain how I went about the process of running a high school fishing team and how others kind of vary from that. So my sophomore year of high school, I think it was 2012, I created the Lake Travis High School Fishing Team and it was super successful. Uh, from the start we had all sorts of uh, parents that wanted to be involved, we had several boats on the team and so what I did is I went through the process of making the team with the TBF, super easy, took a few months, uh, but really what I needed was somebody to help run the team that was an adult and so my dad stepped in that role and kind of was like, you could say the team president, I function in that role, but I think my dad really helped out a lot in the team, uh, both in the, as a school liaison and uh, you know, sponsor relations. So you kind of need some adult to run your team if you're gonna have a high school team. Next, your school is probably gonna require some sort of teacher to be a liaison between the team and you. Uh, my favorite English teacher, Mr. Schrader at Lake Travis, he was our liaison, didn't really do a whole lot besides you know, signs and paperwork, but we did need him. Then on the sponsor side, I'll talk about this later, but we had some local businesses that came out you know, beyond, beside the team and helped support some of the travel. And then we fished three series in the Central Texas area, the Faith Family Network, uh, the TBF, and BASS, if we could make it. But most of the tournaments were kind of too far away. But one cool thing about being from Central Texas is that there was a lot of high school fishing teams. And so we each kind of hosted one or two tournaments a year as fundraisers to help make money for our team. And so I'd fish for Hyde Park tournaments. I'd fish, uh, you know, Round Rock tournaments. I'd fish for Westlake High School tournaments. Every high school would put on all these local tournaments to help raise money for their school. So of course, my high school fishing experience, it just got really dark. I think it's going to rain in a few minutes. Uh, it could be very different than yours, but overall I think that these experiences are shared by most high school anglers in the country. So now that we've talked about kind of the experience, now let's talk about what a high school fishing tournament looks like and where to find them. So high school fishing tournaments kind of work similar to professional bass fishing tournaments, uh, but do have some major differences. To fish a high school tournament, you have to one, be a part of an eligible registered fishing team, two, have a fishing partner, and three, show up and fish. It's literally just that easy. I'm going to go more into detail with these in just a second. So once you and your partner show up for the tournament, you usually fish from sunrise till around 2 p.m. depending on your boat number that day. Then you come in and weigh your bag of fish in front of a crowd. Uh, the team that wins gets either a certain amount of scholarship money depending on how big the tournament is or, or just a whole bunch of fishing gear like rods, reels, lures, uh, you know, clothing, that kind of thing. And a lot of larger tournaments also qualify, let's say the top 10% of qualifying teams or finishing teams at the tournament to a regional or a state championship. 
And in high school, tournaments usually have a small entry fee depending on the tournament, whether it's $20 a team, $50 a team, $100 a team, that you have to pay kind of as you and a partner combined. And then the nice thing to do is to give your boat captain, who we'll talk about here in a second, some gas money to help cover his expenses. So the most frequent question I get in regards to traveling to these tournaments is how do you pay for it? Well, some teams, like I mentioned, are beginning to create revenue through local businesses as sponsors, which can help fund travel. Uh, but for the most part, high school fishing is pretty self-funded. Uh, so this could take many forms, but for us, collecting team dues at the beginning of the semester helped doing that, selling t-shirts to friends, family, and, and people at school, uh, and also holding fundraising tournaments helped fund our travel and helped fund scholarships for the Angler of the Year and second place Angler of the Year at the end of the fishing season. And so, like I said, if you guys want to fish in high school, it's the same goes with college or pro. If you want to make it happen, you're going to make it happen. You guys live in America. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be able to pay for a high school fishing tournament. So at this point, you may be asking, well, Tyler, how do I find these high school fishing circuits or tournaments? And so I've actually done all of the hard work for you guys by compiling a list of as many of the major youth fishing circuits in the nation. So if you go in the description below, I'll also pin it at the top of the comment section. You're going to find a Google document, and on that document uh, is a whole bunch of fishing trails across the nation that I've gotten from you guys. Each trail is listed out in really no particular order. Uh, and so my intent for this cheat is to help inform you guys on the different types of youth fishing tours we have across the country. That way, if you decide to pursue tournaments in youth and high school, your research process is going to be a whole lot easier. All you have to do is go to that Google document, and you'll be right there. And so, of course, this list is definitely not complete, as I'm sure I missed many, many organizations and tournament trails. So if I did miss your local one, please email me at tylersrealfishing at gmail.com. Uh, all the answers to the criteria that you see on the sheet, that way I can add your local tournament trail and people can help find it and, uh, and fish it. And of course, if your tournament trail is already on there and you notice the website is wrong or something is no longer relevant, please email me that as well. That way we can keep this sheet as updated as possible. Now Tyler, what about sponsors? Pros have jerseys, jerseys with sponsors on them, so don't high school teams have sponsors as well? Of course they do, but one thing I've noticed is that sponsors in most high school fishing jerseys, as I've mentioned, aren't the traditional fishing industry companies like Rods, Reels, etc. They are mostly local businesses. And so basically that is, you know, kids on the team that have a mom or dad that owns a business and their incentive for giving money to the team is to get advertising on our jerseys, our banners. Uh, and as people come to the tournaments we host, they see their advertising. Classic marketing campaign, paying a sports team to, uh, to rep your local business. And so it's just the same as any company repping football or volleyball at your high school. Um, and so it, I found that that was the best way to, to fundraise for the, uh, the, the year of travel by getting local businesses. But if you do want some actual fishing companies represented on your jersey, there are so many companies out there that offer killer high school fishing discounts that oftentimes are better than you would get if you were actually sponsored by the company itself. Like we had Pure Fishing, which is Abra Garcia, Berkeley, uh, Trilene, all sorts of things. We got 65% off. And I guarantee you, as a high schooler, even with a YouTube channel, I would not have been able to get an individual you know, sponsor deal for 65% off. So take advantage of the high school things. I know Pure Fishing has high school stuff, Six Cents, Santone, uh, Luz has an awesome high school program. I think Shimano does as well. So there's so many companies out there. And I'll, I'll link a few of the programs down in the, in the description. But really, if you want to find sponsors, use Google. And so a few remaining things that I may not have touched on, uh, some questions I get. Is there a limit to how many tournaments you can fish? No, you can fish as many tournaments as you want. It just may require you to travel all across the country to fish the BASS ones especially that are not in your region. Uh, when I was in high school, there were enough regional tournaments kind of in Central Texas and around Texas that I never had to travel outside of, I mean, really the city, but I traveled, never had to travel outside of the state for a high school fishing tournament. Another question is, do you have to have a boat to fish in high school? Uh, the answer is no. Slight answer, yes, it helps, but actually no, you do not have to have a boat to fish in high school. As I've mentioned, most teams reach out to, actually, I guess I didn't mention this, <laughs> dang it. So the way that we went about getting boats for our high school team is, of course, my family had a boat, some of my buddies had bass boats or bay boats, really any fishing boat in general. And so we would reach out to the local adult fishing clubs and go to their meetings and say, hey, we're a brand new high school team. We'd love to be involved in your in adult club, fish some of your adult tournaments. Uh, is it possible for some of your adults to help volunteer on Saturday mornings to take our kids out? And guys love doing that. We had so many like 50 to 75 year old men just out there taking high school kids out because they can kind of live vicariously through that system. So if you have any adult fishing clubs around your area, whether it's Bass Nation or just like super small clubs, reach out to them because I guarantee they're going to be more than happy to take high school kids out on the water. So to kind of come full circle with that question, do you need to have a boat to fish in high school? No. But if you do have a boat, if your parents and your family can afford it, 
it helps out a lot. Even if it's just you know, an aluminum bass tracker, if it's a nice fiberglass, that's incredible. Uh, but any bass boat works as long as it has a live well, running lights, and a trolling motor. And I think, a, no, it does not need a trolling motor, just a big engine, live wells, and running lights, and, that's, and a kill switch. And that's all you need to fish high school tournaments uh, in the state of Texas and probably around the country. And so before we run out of uh, light here, we got a few more questions. Can you fish the tournaments alone? The answer to that question is most often a no. Uh, I did see a, a few situations in high school where somebody was allowed to fish the tournament by themselves, uh, but mostly you'll need a fishing partner to fish. I don't know why you wouldn't want one. It's an extra line in the water. And you almost always need a boat captain. It was a bummer for me because I wanted to be in control of my destiny. I wanted to drive my boat, but for most tournaments, I wasn't allowed to do that just because of the fact that if I hit somebody, then I'm liable or my parents are liable. And so just for the sake of insurance, they wanted adults driving the boat. And I think that's how it's going to be for a long time. So that is it. I know it was a lot of information. Uh, so if I talked fast, didn't make any grammatical sense or uh, spoke in tongues, whatever, uh, I apologize. But I really do think this is the most comprehensive video on the topic of high school fishing ever made on YouTube. Uh, so once again, if you are looking for all of the uh, high school tournament trails in the nation, click that Google document down below. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys discover some easy ways to get plugged into high school. If I didn't cover a question you had, make sure you guys leave it in the comment section below. This video will probably go out before I even film the college fishing one. So if you have some questions about college fishing, make sure you guys drop those down in the comment section as well because uh, that's, that's going to be a doozy. <laughs> and so if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please consider joining the TRF subscription squad, whatever we call ourselves. I don't call ourselves that. Uh, but my goal on this channel is, like I said, to be your one-stop shop shop for everything bass fishing news and bass fishing information and we'll see you guys in the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing.